my initial reaction was, as you guys have said, it's very open. So that was sort of, oh, well, this is a universalist church, so they're going to be open and accepting to just about everything. And that's sort of reflected in the worship space. But more, I would say more so in the it's door greeters position, because as soon as you walk in, they're like all over you, trying to be helpful and kind and welcoming. So that's sort of also between the foyer and the actual sanctuary, which we would call it that, it, it definitely reflected what I felt to be the values of the universal students. What stuck out to me the most was that they typically had a Christian service, but it was sort of watered down or blanketed over. It wasn't so much anything as blatant, but it was sort of like, okay, you're gonna have singing. They even had hymns. They had piano playing, but they also had spoken poetry, moments of silence, and just sort of things you would have at a meeting for like, I don't know, politics or something more than you would at church. Uh, well, again, it's, it's very open. It does not have anything specific toward a certain philosophy or um, religion, so anyone can sort of walk in and not be offended or feel like anything's being shut down the throat. So I felt like that sort of reflected their views and opinions on that because everyone is welcome. It's, even when you walk in, there's pamphlets for every group of people you think of on their front desk. And it's just sort of like anyone can come in and, and have a not only a place to, to listen to others, but they could even say and share from their own lives. I would say that it's not really a spiritual service. It just sort of seemed more like a place where people could just come and sort of be open about their own beliefs and sort of, I guess, have some sort of uh, affirmation about being not anything specific. So it was, it's more like a social platform than it is a church in itself. So I feel like that was really where everyone sort of gathered their own um, significance from the service and why they keep showing up, because it's not, you don't really do anything specifically during the service, it's just sort of where you show up to sort of share ideas. I would say my conceptions about them being very accepting were confirmed. Misconceptions, it's sort of a half and half. Uh, I kind of expected a certain group of people to be the ones that would go, um, but as I pulled into the parking lot, I actually saw those bumper stickers that said coexist. So you've got all those um, faiths and all their emblems on the bumper sticker, and I was like, oh, that's where these people go. Because you see them everywhere, and you never know what church they go to. Well, they're universalists. So uh, that was sort of a, something I wasn't expecting, but in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, yeah, those people. But after seeing the service, it was more a positive thing than something sort of negative, I suppose. It's really, really open. Um, it's, it's a really small, quaint space. Um, they have like chairs set up, like pews, not actual pews, but they do have chairs set up in like pew style. Um, they do have a place up top where what they call the reverend, you know, where he stands and where he preaches. Um, I mean, it's really, really pretty, but like they said as well, it's really, really bland. There's not much specific kind of decor going on. Um, it doesn't specify any sort of religion when you go, there's no crosses or something like that. Um, but it's a really small, very open space. What she was saying, how they give you kind of your own time to, you know, go over what what has been, you know, talked about that day, and you can kind of just digest everything and uh, do do your own thing because it is such an open sort of place. Um, like she was saying, I mean, there are Christians that go there, there are atheists, so if you want to sit there and pray to your God, you can sit there and do that. If you want to sit there and, you know, really do nothing, stare out the window, you can do that as well. Um, and then once uh, they were talking about how they light the, uh, the chalice at the beginning of the service, and then at the end of, end of the service, they kind of extinguish it and put it out. Um, that kind of stood out, which, I mean, I've seen in other churches, I mean, candles have always kind of been, you light a candle um, when you, you know, for certain prayers, you light a candle. Um, so that, that was kind of cool. Um, and then, obviously, the actual sermon for that day was abortion. So um, it, it, I feel like the whole layout of the entire service was kind of similar to a normal. If you were to go to some, say, a Christian church, it was kind of kind of kept the same form. Once again, 
it was really, really open, and I think it gives the feeling and relates to the feeling of a very open environment, a very friendly, um, you know, they're very tolerant of every sort of religion, every kind of person that walks in there, and I think that space, because it's so open and bright, and um, I think it just it's very welcoming to whoever would like to go there, whoever ends up there. The Sunday that we went there, once again, the topic was abortion. Um, and there were members of the congregation that even went up there and shared very, very personal, very touching stories. So I feel like how Sarah was saying that they do find comfort with each other more than, say, God. Because, I mean, she went up there and shared with the congregation and, you know, more than I would have ever done. So, I mean, and I mean, I respect her for that. And it really did. They're learning lessons not from a holy text, but from each other, I feel like. So that was kind of cool. I knew going in that they are very, very open. So when the topic of abortion came about, um, I was a little surprised at how open they were with their opinions. I mean, I know if you're going to go to, let's once again say, just a Christian church, um, usually come across more, you know, pro-life. And, you know, and they do preach about that. But I feel like Reverend Paul, um, he really just put his opinion on out there. He wasn't shy about it, and even other members just put their opinions out there. And they, everybody was, I mean, very tolerant of it. I mean, your beliefs and your opinions are just so welcome there, and it's really just like a huge montage of everything going on there. So that was kind of cool. Um, I was just a little surprised at how open they were with each other. So, I mean, But I respected that. I thought it was a pretty small space. Um, at the very beginning, when they started that church, it was just a brick house. And then later on, they kind of added more to it. Um, inside where you actually sat, it was kind of like open and spacious. And they had like big windows pointing out towards the woods. So that was kind of distracting to me because I kept looking out the window. <laughs> But um, other than that, it was just kind of bland. At the very beginning, they would light a candle with like this arch-like object thing. And apparently that like the summer legend and this thing that came from Transylvania, I think is what they said. Um, I'm not sure what that really symbolized. But um, they gave you a lot of time to kind of, guess pray or worship in your own way like they would just have a moment of silence and then if you're like a different belief you could either pray or do whatever you wanted to do during that time so I thought that was kind of cool. Like I said it was kind of bland so I guess they just um because they don't have a specific thing that they believe in per se they didn't have much decorations or anything kind of like a cross or anything like that so just like God and other stuff like that. I think that since they are allowed to practice whatever they wish, really, that's really nice. Um, they didn't really judge people for what they believed. They had like people there who were Wiccan and then like atheists. And they had pretty much a wide variety of you know, religion there. And I thought that was pretty cool. You don't really see that in any other kind of religious place. I knew they kind of practice a wide variety of religions. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how they were going to preach a sermon, you know, with so many different religions there, but they kept every, you know, when we, they sung the hymns and everything, there was nothing about God, it was just kind of basic hymns, and so they, I guess they just did a topic about abortion, and I was actually kind of surprised that, you know, they were pro-choice because a lot of places are pro-life. But I respect their choice. Either way, it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was a very friendly environment. We were greeted immediately. Um, they asked us a few questions, and we were asked to wear name tags since we were visitors. And they gave us pamphlets that um, gave the background of their beliefs and the church. Um, they lit a lot of candles throughout the service that kind of stuck out and they rang a few bells. I'm not sure what the bells symbolized to them, um, but with the candles they lit one to begin the service and then there was a part <clears throat> where the members could share 
joy or sorrow, and afterwards they would light a candle. The layout to me was very bland. Um, the walls were just pale white. There were no statues, no paintings, no flowers. Um, the, the vibe I got was because they're not necessarily worshiping a specific thing. So I thought that reflected their beliefs. It was just an empty room. I think it was meaningful because they gave a lot of opportunity to the members to share their own personal experiences. And they, to me, they sought comfort in that from the other members. And um, rather than a higher being, it's like they were seeking guidance and comfort from other human beings. I knew going into it that it was very broad and that you were pretty much welcome no matter what belief you have been raised or beliefs you have. I did think that there was going to be some mention of God or some scriptures read or anything along those lines and there weren't at all. So that kind of surprised me. I didn't realize you had a camera. 